And this is not some random image photoshopped on the internet and just reposted haphazardly by Eric Trump. This is accurate. I know this because I was able to access the same data myself and I was able to reproduce the same spike exactly. And I can tell you, this is 100% legitimate and it exists at precisely the time that is indicated here. The Georgia video. Mr. Reagan. First off, unless we flip the White House through recount or investigations or lawsuits, the Democrats are in control of the White House. So you definitely want security when you're browsing online. A new survey reports an overwhelming 85% of Americans believe that at least one tech company is spying on them through the apps on their smartphones. Two thirds of those asked claim that they'd seen an ad for a product that they've talked about, but they've never actually searched for online. You think Democrats are gonna hold these tech giants accountable? Not a chance. This is exactly why I use Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield prevents advertisers, corporations, and my internet service provider from keeping tabs on me. It's a VPN that was built from the ground up for privacy protection. A good VPN allows you to hide your location online. It prevents advertisers from creating profiles that track you and it allows you to surf the web anonymously. And it does all of these things while being affordable and easy to use. Get Virtual Shield for 50% today by going to virtualshield.com slash Mr. Reagan or by clicking on the link in the description below. Plus, you can get 50% off all Virtual Shield's premium add-ons, including Protection Plus, Residential Access, and their VIP performance plans by going on their website. Now, I do recommend them. I've been with them for a long time. They are a great supporter of my channel. So invest in your privacy and get Virtual Shield today. Go to virtualshield.com slash Mr. Reagan. So by now, you've all seen the security video from Georgia showing Everybody get kicked out of the vote counting room and then soon after they pull out what looks like luggage bags that appear to have been hidden underneath a table and from them pull out a bunch of uncounted ballots and start counting unsupervised. It all looks super suspicious and a lot of people think this may be the smoking gun we've been looking for in order to prove voter fraud. Obviously, we have to combine this with other evidence. The ballots would have to have helped Biden in a statistically significant and unlikely way. And best of all, we'd have to find evidence that these ballots were fraudulent, either marked by a machine or too pristine, no signatures on the envelopes, not fully filled out, etc. And so this video would be the first bit of evidence that would eventually become supporting evidence in a case built around several pieces of evidence indicating fraud. It would be part of the smoking gun evidence rather than being the smoking gun all by itself. And this video is very compelling, especially when combined with the testimony of eyewitnesses who say that the staff there told them that they were done counting for the night and that they should go home. Both 11 Alive journalists on site that night independently confirmed to me that they were not told to leave, but they were told counting was done for the night. Fulton County, they were telling us that their absentee ballot vote counting their workers went home from that this evening. They'll be back uh, around 8, 8.30 in the morning. And why are they only counting them whenever the place is cleared out with no witnesses? The press and the party monitors were not given notice that counting would continue into the early morning hours, and they should have been. And with those who reported that there was a water pipe leak and that that's why they were ushered out of the room. These two excuses for clearing the room were both false and extremely suspicious. So the suspicious reasons for clearing the room, along with the suspicious video of counting new apparently hidden ballots, creates what looks to be compelling evidence. But here's the thing. Despite this video being very compelling, Scott Adams doesn't think so, and he posted a video expressing his doubts. So the first question is, why would they send those witnesses home and tell them, and tell them that they were done for the night? And here's the answer. That never happened. That, that's the whole answer. You think, you think you heard that fact. Just never happened. Fulton County, they were telling us that their absentee ballot vote counting, their workers went home from that this evening. They'll be back uh, around 8, 8.30 in the morning. But what about the fact, allegedly, they were 98% for Biden? How in the world could you have so many ballots that are 98% for Biden? Number one, I don't know that that's true. Do you? I've heard people say it. Do you know that that's true? So I would say that is not even close to a data that I would say, yeah, that sounds pretty credible. Could be true. You could have an entirely separate fraud which created a whole bunch of, let's say, harvested ballots, but would allow the possibility that everyone in that room 
was just counting ballots and didn't do anything wrong. Now, I will say that I agree with Scott Adams insofar as it's likely that some, perhaps most of the irregularities and statistical anomalies that we're identifying from 2020 will eventually prove to be explainable and not actual signs of fraud. And maybe this is one of those cases, but I wouldn't write this one off so quickly just because somebody proposes an explanation that sounds vaguely believable. The initial reports that we got were that people were kicked out of the room and the new ballots emerged from under a table in the luggage. And the explanation we got was that well, only some of the people were told to leave the room. Most of the people who left just misunderstood what was being said and they left on their own. And that the luggage bags were just normal bags and that stuff just tends to be stored under tables and that's normal. Okay, now I'll believe all of this, but only if we see that some of the other ballots were stored under tables too. And I've not seen this yet. You would think that if they wanted us to believe that this was a normal thing, that they'd show other ballots being stored under tables and being brought out throughout the day. Why were these ballots all brought out at the same time, just a, a short while after everybody was sent home? You'd think this was just where they were storing the ballots. You'd think that they'd take them out maybe in 15 or 30 minute intervals, maybe once every hour or so, something like that. It's strange that they started counting all the ballots in all these containers all at once. The next question that you ask, which is a relatively simple one, is was there a spike for Biden in these two hours? And the answer we get is unquestionably yes. Here we see a tweet from Eric Trump. This is the data that was reported minute by minute from the voting tabulators through a company called Edison to the New York Times. And we see here at 1.36 a.m., the very moment these folks were alone doing their unsupervised work, there is this massive vote spike for Joe Biden. And this is not some random image photoshopped on the internet and just reposted haphazardly by Eric Trump. This is accurate. I know this because I was able to access the same data myself and I was able to reproduce the same spike exactly here. And I can tell you this is 100% legitimate and it exists at precisely the time that is indicated here. Now it should be noted that the information from Edison isn't perfect. There is a serious lack of precision in the reporting. However, a vote spike this big defies that lack of precision. So these ladies sent everybody away. They pulled out these hidden ballots, counted them, and there was this massive spike for Biden after that count. Now, at the beginning of this video, I said there was two conditions that would have to be met in order for the surveillance footage to be considered a smoking gun. One, there would have to be a massive voter spike for Biden. I think I've shown that. And two, there would have to be some indications that the ballots were fake. So have a look at this. And as we went through the batches, most of them were pretty worn until we came up to a batch that my words were pristine. It was white. It was so white. And this is a typical absentee ballot. You can see how when it comes to you in the mail, how it's got many folds in it. These had no folds. Um, you could see where it should have been fold if it went through a folding machine or for the voter to figure out easily how to do that. But these did not have that. I was running my hands up and I said to my um, seatmate, I said, feel these, they feel different. And when you have felt absentee ballots for as long as I have, yeah, the years are creeping up there. You know the feel of them. You know the feel of a real dollar bill. You know the feel of a, um, a play dollar bill, even though it might look genuine. But the thing that really jumped out at us, besides the feel of these ballots, besides there were no folds, was an overwhelming amount were exactly not possibly, but exactly the same. I mean, there was one in the middle of this stack that all of us at times have pulled something out of a scanner or a copier too soon, and um, the image is not square on the paper. And she wasn't the only one. According to the Epoch Times, several witnesses reported pristine ballots, and this is all in sworn affidavits submitted by Trump's lawyer, Lynn Wood. The Epoch Times reported that Nine of the affiants swore to have seen suspicious, pristine, uncreased mail ballots uniformly and perfectly filled out, almost always for Biden. In one case, a batch of such ballots included 500 ballots in a row, all cast for Joe Biden. Some of the witnesses said the perfect markings, all in black and never outside the voting bubbles, appeared as though they were printed by a machine or stamped. 
And so we see both conditions are met. And then there is this video. I want to give you two. I ain't trying to overwork you. Overwork? Ain't no such thing. I'm going to be here till 7 o'clock. Okay. Y'all see all this I got to do? I got to do all this. Get her all these. Have some tea power. As you can see, the first ballot here, the first mail-in ballot here, doesn't have a mailing address. There's no return address on here. Do any of these ballots have return addresses? I don't know. Doesn't seem like it. Seems like these are just, I mean, it doesn't look like that ballot went through the mail. These are all pretty clean envelopes. I, I don't know. It's a little suspicious to me. This isn't like earth shattering revelations or anything like that, but it is another element, another, an added little bit of evidence that adds suspicion to the whole thing. And if you combine all these little pieces of evidence, it creates something very compelling. And so we see both conditions are met. We've got the Biden spike and we have the evidence of suspicious ballots. I believe that this video and other supporting evidence is a smoking gun. Now, I would like to say that when I wrote my conditions into the script of this video, I hadn't actually researched either of these things. So I didn't write that as some kind of clever construction. I wrote that with no idea whether or not these conditions would be met. Only after I wrote it did I start researching it and did I discover that in fact both of the conditions are met. And so this CCTV footage is even more compelling than what I first thought. Now I should say that I actually have a great deal of respect for Scott Adams and I highly value his videos and his perspective. I think he's probably got a super high IQ, which is probably what makes him sound like such a smug SOB all the time. Uh, but I do think that his perspective is invaluable and I'm happy that he's hanging around the internet sharing his genius with the rest of us. I'm really only using his video to rail against because I'd rather talk about him than some loony left-wing news media person, the statements of whom we have no good reason to entertain at all. Scott Adams though, his statements are worth entertaining, very much so, and that's why I'm using his video and not something from CNN or MSNBC. And you should know that Scott Adams does believe that the election was stolen. In fact, he strongly believes that it was stolen. Now, let me be as clear as I can. There's a 100% chance, in my opinion, that the election was rigged. How often does major fraud happen when it's possible, in fact, quite possible, and people really, really want to do it? How often? Every time. If you have a non-observed election in the United States, the highest stakes you could possibly imagine. Yes, it, of course it happened, <laughs> of course. As he said, his reasoning is that he believes that there was ample opportunity to steal the election and massive motivation to steal the election. And anytime there's massive motivation and ample opportunity, that opportunity will inevitably be exploited. The logic is sound. However, he also believes that most of the red flags will not actually prove to be signs of voter fraud, but rather some kind of explainable thing, something totally legitimate and not actual fraud at all. And actually, I totally agree with that. The problem, if you want to call it that, that I have with Scott Adams' position is that he seems to dismiss any need to prove fraud because the lack of transparency alone in this election has already compromised it, and so the election should be invalidated on those grounds alone. You got your video that you, th you think shows some uh, corruption. You've got your data analysis that shows some worrying things. You got hundreds of witnesses. Now add up all of those strong arguments and then just throw them in the ocean because you don't need them. The only thing you needed was bullies made witnesses leave. That's the end of the conversation. Nothing matters but that. It's the only thing that matters. And if you allow yourself to imagine the other stuff matters, you, you are victim of misinformation and misdirection. All that matters is it was non-transparent by force. Because bullying is force. <laughs> this was a violent coup. Or you must assume it was a violent coup because the witnesses were uh, intimidated away uh, by force. So the, the assumption is it's a stolen election because of the bullying of the witnesses. You don't need anything else. Nothing else. 
And I kind of agree with this too. However, he's making more of a philosophical argument and it's not really a practical argument. The reason it's not practical is that he's overlooking the reality of the situation, which is that most of the country will not accept that this election should be invalidated simply because of a lack of transparency or because of the bullying of some vote watchers. Th these are not small things, of course, but most of the country thinks they are small things. These people want to see proof of fraud. They'll settle for nothing less. And fair enough, invalidating an election, after all, is a big deal. And so we must prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this election was stolen if we hope to win the election back for Trump. And look, Scott Adams may be right. This Georgia thing may end up being nothing. Maybe. It's totally possible. But it's also possible that this is hugely important. It may be one of the linchpins, one of the key factors that will eventually undo the 2020 voter fraud scheme. Now, Gabriel Sterling, an election official in Georgia, a man who purports to be a Republican, but who seems to have no interest whatsoever in uncovering any kind of election fraud, he had another story that he used to explain the video. And actually, I think his story sounds totally reasonable. Let's listen. What happened around that time, for many of you who were with us on election night, saw the secretary leaving around a similar time. We had heard that they were knocking off for the day. And he was understandably not happy with that and made that very clear, I think, on the way out the door. So our elections director for the state called the Fulton County elections director, Rick, Rick Barron, who was at the English Avenue warehouse doing election day activities, not a state from arena, and said, why are y'all knocking off? And he basically said, what do you mean we're not knocking off? And he goes, well, from what we understand, a state farm, they are. So Rick got off that phone call. Then you see Ralph Jones at State Farm Arena getting a phone call around that time as he's literally with blue seals in his hand to seal up these containers. And you can see his shoulders kind of slump for a second. Then he goes over and does some more work on the side. I think ginning up the courage to go tell these workers who had been there all day, hey guys, we have to stay here longer to keep scanning at least the batches we have. So you can watch all this happen. You can see it from the beginning to the end. I mean, that sounds totally reasonable. And maybe it is. And maybe it's 100% exactly what happened. And actually, I would totally believe the guy. I, would, I wouldn't even encourage anyone to look into this any further if, if we did not see that massive vote spike for Joe Biden at just this time. I mean, it, this almost feels like a Columbo, an episode of Columbo. I don't know if you ever watched that old show. At the end of the old show, there was always like one thing that he just found curious, right? It's like you listen to this guy, Gabriel Sterling, and you're like, you know, that that actually makes sense. I guess I guess there's nothing suspicious here after all. You folks have a nice night. Then you start walking away, but you turn around and you go, but you know what? There's just one thing, just one one little thing that bothers me. It's that it's that damn vote spike. So strange that Biden would get a massive vote spike at the exact moment that the vote counters were running ballots unsupervised. So, such a strange coincidence. Vote counters who just happen to be massive Biden supporters and happen to totally hate Donald Trump. And look, maybe this is nothing. Maybe it is a smoking gun. I don't know. I'll be honest, I don't really care. I don't care one way or the other. I don't care if these Biden supporting vote counters committed fraud or not. All I care about is one thing. Was there fraud? And I believe that there was. And so we have to uncover all of it and we have to invalidate the vote because of it. And what frustrates me about this Georgia video and the other compelling evidence that I've read about is that no one except Trump's team seems to be looking into any of this. Where the hell is the FBI? These things need to be investigated criminally. This is not some little thing. This isn't a funny prank by a teenager. This isn't somebody shoplifting. This is the integrity of our entire system of government we're talking about. I don't get why this isn't all hands on deck. The absence of the FBI in this entire situation has disappointed me more than I can express. I feel like to some degree, our democracy has already fallen. If the top criminal investigators in the country are ignoring voter fraud, fraud with dozens of compelling witnesses, statistical evidence, red flags all over the place, then we no longer live in the country of Ronald Reagan. It seems to me that the republic that I grew up believing in is now broken. I just hope it can be repaired. Well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that our liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that is not so. Good night. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. 
And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening.